Hello guys, welcome to EZTV Presence Tech View, um, another episode. So in this episode, um, actually I'll try to show you guys how you can implement or you can integrate your Active Directory environment with your vCenter. So if you work as a BMR admin or BMR engineer, it's your responsibility whenever you set up a vCenter, after that, you should integrate your vCenter with your Active Directory. Now the question is, and this, today's topic is really, really important for senior level administrator, like senior level engineer, um, because it's completely your duty. It's completely your responsibility how you can integrate it, right? So it's very important and I'll show you different, different ways how you can integrate it, right? There's a several way you can do it. So the first, the two things I'm going to show you, most of the people, they integrate the first option, the first way, but that one is not that much secure. So which one I'm talking about, I'll show you shortly. But again, it's very important. Don't ignore any uh, anything because if you like forward the videos, it's gonna be a long video anyway. You should watch it. If you want to learn it, you should watch it. And also, if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you watch the whole video, if you think it's helpful or it's help you, share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to click the bell icon to get my next video. Let's get started. First, I'm going to give you some uh, concept. And before concept, okay, let's, let's, let's check. One thing, okay, let's close it out. Okay. So actually, I had already one. I'm going to remove it. Okay. So brand new look like it's going to be like this. Okay. So so let's actually share my screen. Okay. So I believe you guys are able to see it. And I just move mine here, or maybe I can like, okay. So I just wanna give you some concept. So the environment will be look like this. Like when you just let's start it from the beginning. So when you log into the your base center, so I logged in as a what is I logged in administrator at primary dot local. That means this is a administrator account single sign on account local local single sign on on B center. So in my B center video, I already told you guys like B center itself is a small active directory kind of active directory. That means the way Active Directory works, vCenter has its own Active Directory to manage the local users, local accounts inside the vCenter, only the vCenter. And when you set it up the vCenter, you have to set up a single sign-on uh, domain, which is local domain. And my local vCenter domain name is primary.local. It can be anything, right? So now, if you don't integrate your Active Directory, that means what? As administrator, you will be able to log in because you know the local administrator or local domain. But uh, in your organization, if you have a 500 employees and out of 500, if some of the departments, they need to have access on this center, then how are you gonna provide them access? How are you gonna provide them the privileged access? So that's the question. That's why you need to integrate your Active Directory with your vCenter. So now the question is how are you gonna do that? And before I starting, before I start doing, I wanna show you some couple of things to clear your, or like make your understand, like to clear your um, concept, actually what, from where you should start, right? So for concept, I'm going to show you one thing. Uh, let's first see actually where you should go to start uh, doing this. 
you have to go to um menu this is the menu bar for this is b center 6.7 that's why this is a b center 6.7 so 6.7 or b center 7 or b center 8 all are same same process same method but the menu wise the design wise is a little bit change option wise is a little bit change so in 6.7 you're going to see as a menu here you can click here and then you're going to see the menu and from there you can go administration but for uh, seven and eight, you're gonna see three dot here. So you're gonna click here, then you're gonna see the same kind of list. And from there, you should go administration. When you go to the administration, you're gonna see there is a bunch of options where you should go. So you have to go single sign on. So users and groups, so let's see here. You're gonna see only primary and locals, right? Local is, is a local domain. It's, you see administrator. So if you add any user, you create any user here, you can add it. So that user is gonna be a local user. It's not activity user. So if you want to provide 500 people access on this B center, or maybe 100 people, or maybe 50 users, you're gonna assign here to give them different, different levels of access. Then how are you gonna assign them? You're gonna create a 50 user? You're gonna create a 100 user? It's not possible locally. That's why you need to integrate your Active Directory. So, so the integration process is you have to go to, under the single sign-on, you have to go to configuration. And then you're gonna see here two options is identity source and Active Directory domain. And this one will be empty because I have I had it before. And if I leave it now to show you guys, then I have to reboot it. That's why I didn't do that now, but it's gonna be like this. When you wanna add it, join. You see, join ID is a gray out because I already joined it. And if you want to remove it, so, so remove it the same way you have to assign your uh, username and password, then yeah, you have, then leave, it's going to be leave. But you have to reboot it. So I, I don't have time to uh, time, I don't have time now to reboot it. So that's why I'm just leaving like that. But if there is no configuration with your ID, you just simply say join ID. Join ID, then you're going to see the same options. Domain name, organizational unit is optional. You don't need to just provide your, this is the way to integrate. It's the easy way. This is the easy way. This is the easy way you can do it. So active directory domain, and then provide the domain name and then username, provide an administrator user is like from your service account. Don't, don't do with your A account. Don't do with your active directory administrative account. Because if you leave the organization, then your account will be deleted and then this authentication will suffer because it's not going to find you uh, it's not going to find you and your visa are not going to uh, will not be able to con con contact with your active directory because the users you verified when you integrate it that user is deleted so that is very important when you integrate something if you want to integrate something with your application and your uh, active directory make sure you use your service account so assign the service account and password, and then say join, because now it's still leave, and that time it's gonna show join. So when you join it, and then after a couple of minutes, it's gonna show like this. Maybe you have to reboot the B center. And then you have to come back, identity source, and then you have to say add identity source, and then Active Directory, Windows Integrated Authentication. Windows Integrated, that's it. And then you can say add. You can say add, it's gonna be add. You see? It's added. It's added already. Now, if you go to the user account, and now you're gonna see, you see, yellow is here. Now you're gonna see all the users. If I say okay, BC admin, BC admin, search it. You see, BC admin is there. But if you remove it, I'm going to remove it now because I don't wanna. Most of the system admin or most of the B-Center admin, uh, they do the integration this way, but this is not secure. This is not secure. So that's why I am not recommending you to do that. And I'm going to remove this one, remove it. Okay. And the other problem. Okay, I, I actually, I'm gonna show you actually what other problem is. So if you integrate with the Active Directory integrated authentication, added, it's gonna simply add, nothing else. 
yearly, right? And but identity sources, LDAP authentication. This is a secure LDAP. So we're gonna do the LDAP authentication. I'll show you this LDAP. Not only LDAP, inside the LDAP, you can have two ways. One is secure and one is non-secure. So secure one, you have to do LDAPs. LDAP and LDAPs. That means HTTP and HTTPS, kind of like this, right? So LDAPs means it's secured channel, and then you have to assign a certificate. You have to assign a certificate. So all those options are same for any version, 6.7 or vCenter 7 or vCenter 8. The same options. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you everything. So when you integrate, most of the, I said most of the engineers or most of the system admin, VMware admin, they integrate like this way, but like just assign a domain name. So they will get everything, right? So when you logged in, the problem is I, I'm going to log out. So now it's in, it, uh, integrated, right? So the problem is, uh, just give me one second. Actually, I forget to as assign a user. So you are, you, all right. So let's show you one thing. So you added, so now you my domain is added right directly with the <coughs> vCenter, right? So do you think whatever the user accounts I have, everybody will have access on the vCenter? Is it true? No, it's not true because you integrated that means now you will be able to assign a user. Integration means now you will be able to assign a user from your Active Directory. You integrated with the Active Directory, it not means that all of the users by default will have access on your vCenter. It's not true. So it depends on you how you're gonna how you're gonna assign them, right? So let's show you, let's show you one thing. I'm gonna assign. Okay, again. I'm logging as uh, like as a local admin now. Single sign on local admin, okay? So now if I want to assign, say for example, um, group or user, whatever you can want, it, you're gonna get the entire, you're gonna get entire ELS users. So ELS has, if you, this is my domain actually. So if the ELS domain has a multiple OU, multiple uh, sub OU, under multiple sub OU, if you have multiple users like this, like this, say ELS.com, user accounts, administration, it says sub OU, and then under this, there is the marketing and marketing has 50 users. Maybe it can have more multiple sub OU, right? So that means whenever you do the integration like this, um, like this, Integration like this, like now it's integrated, right? It's directly through the Active Directory. If it's this way, that means you're gonna get the entire Active Directory. So if you want to assign some of the users from marketing, you can do this. If you want some of the users from uh, developers, you can get it, right? That means everything will be available on your vCenter console, right? Everything will be available here. If you go here and choose the choose the domain, then you can just need to search. You will get, you're gonna get it and then you're gonna assign it. And then when you assign them, it depends on where you're gonna assign them and which role you're gonna assign them. Based on that, they will have different, different types of access. That's a different thing. That's called a permission or privileged access. But in here, I'm just trying to make you guys understand why you're gonna do that, why you're gonna integrate it, right? That's what I'm just trying to explain. So, but in, in, in here, it's, it's not, I said it's not secure, the which is the secure way, that's what we're gonna look at. So I'm going to delete this identity source, which is Active Directory integrated Windows authentication, right? I'm going to remove it, okay? And then you, you complete remove this, you should leave it. But I'm not going there because after, if I do leave it, then it's gonna be, I have to reboot it. So one integration I already show you guys, already showed it, but because I already joined it, but I show you what's the options, how you're gonna do that, right? So you just simply say join Eddie, then you're gonna see here and user, user name, that means your uh, service account, 
in my case, my service account is <clears throat> uh, B, BC, BC admin. BC admin means service account, you can add ELS.com and I, I just need to provide the password, that's it. And you're gonna be joined like this and then you have to come back here and then you have to say ID source. Then by default, I just want this one is selected. Then you can say yellows.com is everything over here and you say add. That's it. That's it. First authentication is done and you can run it. No issues. But only thing is I'm saying like if you want to have a secure authentication, in that case, you shouldn't be do like this. So you should go with directly with the identity source and then from there you should select active directory over LDAPs, this one. Now a question. So if you say, okay, I have already this one and can I do, can I do the other one? Can I do the LDAPs? No, you cannot run at a time both. So you have to remove one of them. And if you want standard configuration, you should always go for LDAPs. LDAP. So you should select Active Directory over LDAP. Active Directory over LDAP. And then name. So what should be the name? Name can be anything, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But if you want to want if you want to do traffic shaping for your Active Directory, that means if you have a multiple domain controller, if you don't want everybody to forward directly to the um, domain controller, say for example, your domain controller will have a lot of pressure, right? Because um, if you if your organization has a 50, uh, 50 application or up to 100 application, and each application has a 50 users minimum, right? Fifth, so 50 application, each user have 50 um, users. That means how many users? 2,500 users, right? So 2,500 times, 2,500 times authentication required if everybody try to access the application every day. So if you forward all 2,500 2, users to the same domain controller, it's gonna be a lot of pressure, right? So if you have a multiple domain controller, so you can say, okay, uh, this activity, this vCenter I gonna uh, do, actually in my environment, I have only one, one um, domain controller. I have only one domain controller, right? So that's why I said this is your one. But in your organization, when you work, maybe they will have multiple domain controller. Maybe they will have a uh, six domain controller, maybe 10 domain controller, maybe 12, maybe 16, maybe 20 domain controller. So each and every application, you can separate it. So separate the traffic, you can have assigned different, different domain controller like this. And then actually name doesn't matter. It's just a name. And then base distinguished name of users. This is the matter, how you're gonna assign it. Now you need to actually understand this, this thing, what does it mean? What does it mean? Ba base distinguished name for users, base distinguished name for groups. So, so for example, if this is, here is the programmer, 50 programmers. So you want only, you want only to see programmer users, whoever is a programmer in your organization, you want to only see them on the B center. So that means your distinguished name will be OU equals to programmer, this is, and then OU IT, that means is this program is under IT, right? And then this IT is under user account, right? Then comma, OU, you use the user accounts, but how are you gonna get it, right? That's the question. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, what? So in my case, if I want level one, I have only one user, right? So if I go, right click here, um, properties and go attribute. So sometimes attribute not gonna show you here as a option, right? Because of if you, advanced feature is not enabled. If you look at like this, if you go to users, marketing, level one, uh, sorry, level two, 
if you have a 50 users, I have only one, but if think about if you have a 50 users here, so how are you gonna look at it? Go to the properties, you see, attributes is not here, right? Why? Because this option is not enabled. So if it is not, if you cannot see it, go to the advanced feature, then again, user accounts, marketing, level two, and then right click and go to the properties. And then you see, attribute address is here. And if you go to the attribute users and scroll down, you're gonna see distinguished name. So you didn't, you don't need to memorize or you don't, you don't need to type it, just copy it, that's it. And assign here. So that means what? It's not mean that whatever the user you have on this OU, I have only one, right? But think about it has a 50 users here. It means all 50 users, you will be assigned, you will be assigned a permissions for B center. You, if you assign like this, it not mean that all 50 already have access. No, they don't have access. You can assign them for access. That's what it means. That's what it means. But do you, so if you do this kind of authentication, do you think in future, if you want to add somebody from marketing, you can add it on the B center, on the, on the B center here? No, you cannot get it. You cannot get it. So let's try one thing. What's the difference? Now I want to show you. And then what should be the group name? Group name, you can say directly um, this distinguished name. Your dc.ells.com. Or you can see your accounts or something like this. It's not an not an issue. You can say dc.com, okay. And domain name, what is the domain name? ELS.com, right? And then domain name, the sorry, domain LAS name, LAS name is just only ELS. ELS is the, uh, before the dot something, it can be .com, .org, .net, .gov, uh, .local, .anything. But before dot, whatever you have, that's your domain alias. And username. So my here is my username, my BC. BC admin is my ELS.com. So you see, there is a, two ways I can assign. So you see here, I have a user account. Okay, so go here. BC admin, BC admin, if you go to the properties and go to the attributes editor and go down, 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 and you're gonna see your attributes. Yeah. Okay, so CN, B Center, Admin, OU, User, Accounts, ADC, ELS. So that's what you got it, right? Just copy it. So in here, you can, you have two choices, either this way or maybe, or maybe you can do this way, either way. So then you have to remove this one, either way. That's fine. This one will work, this one also will work. So I'm not going to put this one, but anyway, in either, either one, okay. Now the password. Okay, password of this with this uh, service account, right? Now, connect to, connect to specify domain controllers. Okay, actually the information I provided you, your LDAP server, right? So, it means, it not means that in here you can have anything, it doesn't matter. Let's see, it doesn't matter. But which domain controller you are forwarding, it depends which LDAP server you are using, right? So you can have a multiple LDAP server. So multiple LDAP server. So in our case, I have actually my DC01 is my domain controller, also my same LDAP server. But in, in, in real field, in your enterprise level, they will have separate LDAP server, separate, completely separate role with LDAP server. So you can provide that LDAP server information here. LDAP server here. So ELS dot. Okay, so there is some process to assign an LDAP server. So if you have a LDAP 01, LDAP 02, LDAP 03, that means you are 
you are shaping the traffic, you are distributing the traffic to different domain controller through your LDAP server. And there is a way to write down this URL. If you don't know, if you forget it, just click here, then you're gonna see it. You see, LDAPs or LDAP, then your host name, then colon port number, right? That's what we have to do here based on the instruction. So LDAP, so first I'm gonna show you LDAP, then colon slash slash, then ELS dot, so this is your LDAP server, ELS dot com, right? And colon, then port number. So for LDAP authentication, LDAP, LDAP authentication, port number is 389. That's it. And you don't need to have any certificate. That's it. That's the configuration. And added. All right. It's added, right? You see, this name doesn't matter. The matter is which domain controller is using, providing, right? So I have only one. That's why I signed this. And all the traffics, if I have a 50 application and only one domain controller or one LDAP, then all traffic gonna go through this. But if, if I have a multiple uh, domain controller or multiple LDAPs, so through the LDAP server, it will go different domain controller. So um, now if I come back here, okay. I'm gonna see here, ELS is here again, right? ELS is here again. Now, what I can do, you see, when I select the ELS, it shows only one user, no more user. If I say, okay, B, B center or, or BC admin, right? I have a username BC admin, BC, A-D-M-I-N. It's not showing, right? It's, it's, there is no users display because the OU I assign, if you come back here, identity source, if you select this one, edit it, what I, what I added here, OU level 02. So whatever the users I have on level 02, only those users I can assign. Other users I cannot assign. Other users I cannot assign. I believe now you can understand a little bit, right? So if as a distinguished name, if I assign this one like this, if I remove this, this two, that means what? This my right now my distinguished name is OU equals to user hyphen account. That means this one. So the, it means that whatever I have 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, right? 150, 150, 150. That means 450. So for all 450 users will be available on this, on this B center, on this B center, if I do like this. Okay, sorry, marketing, okay, yes. Okay, if I do now this way, Maybe I have to remove first. Okay, no, I just edited it, okay? So now see the difference. Now come back here and select the ELS. What are, you, what are you able to see? You see, all the users belongs to or under, under, under accounts, any sub use, if any sub you has 50, it's gonna be show here. If this is not 50, it's gonna be show here. So all will show like this, like this. Now I assign this distinguished name and then it's gonna show all the Sabo use users together. So now if you come back here, what it shows, it shows all the users. It shows all the users, it's not mean that all of them has access. Access is on your hand. So integration means is all the activity users are available to provide access is available to provide them access, but you didn't provide them access yet. So in, in later on, whenever anybody is looking for, okay, if Saif says, okay, can you give me the access? Then you can say, okay, Saif is looking for access, right? So a Saif search, you're gonna get it, right? You're gonna get him, right? You're gonna get him, right? 
So you can give him permission. So how are you gonna give him permissions? So the permissions, provide him the permissions is here. Uh, support deployment access. You see a role and access. Okay, so now it depends on which role you're gonna provide him, right? Okay, so if, for example, if he wants to provide Saif as administrator, right? So you can add him here. Add him here, add a member, and you can say uh, ELS, and you can search Saif, and you can add him. So Saif will have a administrative permissions. But if you don't want him as administrator, if you want to select different, so you're gonna come back here, role, and then you can select any one, add okay this is how to add it okay anyone so for example no access right or read only access right we you want to assign read only access right so you cannot see read actually privilege access what it shows so if you wants to provide anybody or any group to a group provided access, you have gonna go here and add them on a group. So this is administrator group. If you assign, assign anyone, any of the groups, so you can add it from here. You can add it from here, select ELS, and then search a group. I think we have a SQL something. You see SQL groups, you can assign SQL groups. That means all, all members belongs to this group will have administrative access. This is a like, root level access but if you wants to have a different kind of access then you can go outside of this host level and then provide a like ou based or host based or maybe computer cluster based see each and everyone has a permission each, each host has a permission each um um resource pool each resource pool has a permission option so it depends you depends on you and if you assign somebody like this add you can say primary ELS and then you can say okay say for example SIF or someone or maybe B center or I don't know or BC admin see here anybody anybody so now what kind of permission you, you assign him on this folder as administ administrator that means he will be only administrator on this folder on this uh, resource pool not the others that's what the permission is mean. So that's why you should integrate. And, and the, the integration I shows you is just only, it's just only LDAPs, right? I'm sorry, LDAP, LDAP authentication. So now I'm gonna show you, this is, this is only LDAP. This is only LDAP. So LDAP is not also secured. So how are you gonna secure them? You have to add, okay, I'm going to delete this remove it okay now if you come back here you don't gonna see any more yellows right it's not anymore okay so now this is the final one this is the important one you should watch or you should see you should follow if you wants to have a um active directory uh, activity over LDAP authentication. And also if you wants to do it um, as the LDAPs authentication, in that case, what do you have to do? In that case, you have to assign a certificate. So now you need to know how to generate the certificate, right? How to generate the certificate. So through this, we're gonna do that. So before we do fill it up this form, like for the identity source, we have to generate the certificate. Now, the question is how you're gonna generate the certificate. So I have already here, I'm going to close out this one. So in your uh, B center, you have to access to the party. So SSH, your SSH should be, the B center SSH should be enabled through the party software. You can do the SSH on your, on your B center. In my case, I'm going to log in my B center. You can log in with different, different way. Okay, maybe it's not, maybe it's the wrong one. Just give me one second, I'll show you within short time. So I'm going to go back. 
let's see what it is. I'm not sure if everything is available or not. Okay. There, uh, so this is actually P center eight. I don't know, I have, because long time ago I deployed it. Maybe there is no license. And also I forget the, SS, SS, uh, what is called the local single sign-on user. Let's try. Okay, I forget actually. What was the local? Let me try one thing. Good. Okay, it's not gonna. Okay, let me try another thing. Just for checking, let's just for checking. Uh, five four eight zero. So five four eight zero. When you put it five four eight zero, that means is a center uh, management. So you can log into the root. So you see, password expired. Okay, anyway, um, I have a 6.7, but I think I can log in here. So anyway, one of the vCenter you need to log in. So I'm going to log in one of my vCenter, okay? And password. Actually, long time ago I implemented Sorry. Again. Root. Let me make it big. Current password. It, it, the reason it's showing like this because long time I didn't use it and also the certificate is expired. I pass also the root password is expired, that's why. But wait, see, remote side on the network connection. Oh my goodness. So it's immediately failing. So now it's not allowing me anymore to log in. It's disconnecting. So you can log in with your, uh, this or you can log in with this, either way.
तो इसके ओके से ट्राई दिस वन एक्चुअली लॉन्ग टाइम आई डिडन लॉग इन दिस बी सेंटर दैट्स व्हाई आई एम हैविंग इश्यूज Okay, let me show you with any other other one, any kind of that. That's uh, I think I have. I have a Linux system. Maybe that can be work. Um, which I recently implement, and I have a plan to create. To come to create a complete video for this, which is IPAM. What is the IPAM? I have IPAM server here. You see that? I... Oh my God! Okay, is there IPAM server? So I have I IPAM server here or oh, this one. So let's see what the IP address of it. Oh, I forgot it. Let's have the IP address of IPAM. PHP, IPAM, and .ls, right? Okay, anyway, uh, just I need to figure out what's the password for, uh, what's the IP address? What is the IP address for this one? Let's look up IPAM. PHP address. Okay, so the IP is this. Let's try to log in. I don't know if the SSH is enabled or not, but let's try. So today we have really, really bad luck. This access denied. Okay, it's not working. Anyway, so what should I do? 168.1.42 and root, and then I'm just going to copy it, the password. Then enter current password. New password. Oh, 
Well, so actually it, it didn't give me it. Okay, let me do one thing. Let's try. So, all right, you guys already understand I have, I'm, I'm having some issues because long time I didn't log into the vCenter management console for 6.7 and also H and my root password is already expired. So that can be also happen. And for this one, I had another solution. If you go to my channel, um, I have a video for that vCenter root password expired. So if you have this kind of issues, you can resolve it like this way. So it's just a reference for you guys. If you have this kind of issues, I have a bit separate video for this. So this is the one thing. And now um, I want to show you the alternative because the way now we are trying to generate a certificate, right? We need an LDAP certificate. So that certificate you can generate uh, through any kind of um, Linux system, any kind of appliance if you have in your environment. So I tried to access uh, uh, my vCenter through party session, but it doesn't work because of I forget the root password. Long time I didn't use. That can be happen in your case also. Maybe, maybe, it's, but it's not supposed to be. Anyway, because this is my personal environment, that's why long time I didn't log in. But in your office environment, you're supposed to have everything up to date. So you shouldn't have that kind of issues. But if you have issues, you can just watch my video. You, you'll be able to resolve it. Okay, anyway, now I'm gonna use my another one of the box I show you here. Like I have a, a Linux appliance machine for my IPAM, which is IP address management. And I don't know the password. That's why I find out the password, which is this one. Oh, sorry, not this. Um, IPAM, okay, let's, let's, let's find out again. CMD, because it's not showing the password, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ah, IP address here. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the IP address for this appliance machine. So I know the appliance machine name, so you can say NS lookup, and then phpipam.ls.com, I know as my domain, T is, is giving me the IP address. So I need this IP address, that's it. So in here, I can log in with the IP address, or maybe I can log in with the IPM, uh, um, phpipm.ls.com. That's what also gonna work. Okay, click okay, make it, okay. So my username actually not root, it was php. I forget it before, that's why. I know now I, can, I will be able to log in. So password. So any appliance machine, if you have an environment, just log in there and then, run a command, so I'll share with you guys, which is this one, open SSL space S underscore client, then space hyphen connect space, then your domain, like not your domain actually, your uh, LDAP server, your LDAP server, your LDAP server fully qualified domain name. So that means your LDAP server name with your domain name, and then colon 3636, uh, which is LDAPs, which is LDAPs port number, right? It should be your LDAP server, right? My, I, I assign here my domain controller because I have only one server. In one server, I have certificate authority server. I have um, like CS server and also I have LDAP server, everything together in one box because it's my personal environment. But in, in your case, if you work for a company, they will have separate, separate uh, servers for separate application, like say, Active Directory domain controller separate, LDAP server separate. Maybe they can have multiple LDAP server and also um, what it's called, CA server, certificate authority server separate. But in my case, everything is same one. That's why I use this one. But make sure you assign this uh, port number. So I'm going to copy the whole thing and paste it here and enter. Now you see it's giving me the certificate. So what I need to do, I just need to copy the whole thing from begin to end, just copy this one, just copy. And then, sorry, 
if you select it, it's going to be a copy. And then open it, uh, open like uh, notepad and paste it here. You see, I paste it here. Then go to the file, file, save as, and then all files. And in here, you can say LDAP, as LDAPs dot CER, dot CER certificate, right? And put it on the download folder and save it. Okay, I save it, right? So now let's check here. Oh, actually, I just, just give me a second. I have one here. I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so I should open, okay, this one, right? So this one, file, save as all documents. Again, save it again, ldeps.cer and save it. So now go back here and check in download folder. Yes, I have ldeps here, right? The certificate is saved. See, 11, 10, 23, 10, 04. Is 10 or five, just a couple of seconds ago. I just saved it, right? So I have it, I know. Now we can go back to the B center and go back to the administration and then go to the configuration, identity source, identity source, and then active directory over LDAP. And then here, so again, if you want all, all of them, but it's, it's not gonna harm you if you assign everybody. Or you can do what? Just do the whole whole domain. It's not a problem. So it's up to you. If you say user accounts, that means your user account, only the user accounts will be there. But if you want to search a group, say for example, in here, group has a different OU. It's not under this. Group is directly under a domain, so you will not get the groups. That's the problem if you assign like this. So that's why I said it's not going to harm you if you like assign whole or whatever OU you have by default. So base DN and both can be same. Both can be same. It's not going to have any issues. So you can say. DCLS.com, that is the whole domain you are assigning. Sorry. And in here, you can say anything, ELS or something, whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And in here, you're going to say same thing. So base distinguished name supposed to be on the folder path of your accounts user, right? Which is this. That means all the users belongs to this OU or sub OU, right? But if you have some, your user can be here, group user can be here, OU, or maybe your group user group users, like user group, user group, or you may be in a different uh, under ELS. In that case, you don't want to find them. So that's why I said it's better to have like the whole domain. So you're going to include everything together. And then ELS.com. And then this LAS name is ELS, which is before the dot. And then username is administrator. No, not this one, actually. Username is what? B center admin. So you can do this way or B center admin. I show you here, right? Which is like this way. Go to the attributes and take the whole thing of copy. I, I will show you like this way now because the other way I already shows you. So you can have like this and then you can say password. Okay. And then specify now LDAP server information. So LDAPS, now LDAPS, right? Colon, slash, slash, colon, slash, slash, and then what? Your LDAP server information. So my LDAP is same, I ex already explained. My domain controller, my LDAP, my CA, everything is together in one box. So if you have a multiple LDAPs, provide any one of them, if you want to distribute the traffic with other application, right? Which I explained uh, before. So ELS.com 
and then colon make sure the port number 636 which is LDAP port or LDAP port is 389 right and now you need a certificate whenever you are trying with the LDAPs then you have to need you need a certificate so LDAPs and then add wonderful so it's added now go back here check ls is here and then all the users accounts and everything computer accounts everything here why because when you did the authentication you use the domain as a base dm distinguished name and group everything you use that's why it's going to show everything it's not mean that all of the user will have access now it's your control whenever you want you can assign the people based on their requirement and based on your target, you can assign them, give them privileged access on different, different folder, different, different, um, or what is called resource pool or folder, whatever, or host or cluster. It depends on you. So permissions, if you do give them permissions here, permissions and add them, okay. Say for example, uh, ELS, say Saif, okay, if you want to give him, so Saif is there, right? So if you give him uh, just only view or read only, just read only, and also the whole, um, for all the subfolders, he said yes, and then okay, then, then he'll be only available to see this cluster, nothing else. That's what it means. So that's how you can assign. So what we learned so far, so we learn three ways we can do the AD authentication or integration, which is to the Active Directory, you have you can add it directly domain, and then after after here you have to come here, and then you you have to add it like this Active Directory domain. Now you cannot do it do it because already one authentication is already running, but if you don't have this LDAPs, then you can do the other one. So that's one thing. And then there on, on the under the LDAP authentication, which is Active Directory over LDAP, there is two way you can do that. Same configuration, everything is same, just only in a state of LDAPs, you're gonna do LDAP. But if you want to do LDAPs, then you have to have a certificate. And then how are you gonna generate the certificate and how you know the certificate, you either you have to contact with your Active Directory administrator, or if you have a permission, just run the way we run it or the way we, I show you in here. That's why you run and collect the certificate and then save it and then assign it this way. Browse and this, the way I just showed you a couple of minutes ago. So this is the way. And actually, um, you can have multiple. So now if you have another domain controller or another identity source, you can add them. So if one is failed, then another will do work. That also you can do different identity source. But the same identity source you cannot do multiple times. Okay. So it's already assigned here. This is what actually I tried to show you guys. And I know it's it's gonna it's a big a long time video. Anyway, you can just forward it, whatever the space like we had problem, you can just forward it. And also if you like this video please um uh, Give a big thumbs up. And if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching my video. Uh...